you watched my last video, then you know exactly where I'm going today. I am going to the cancer clinic to meet a chemo oncologist and to discuss the BRAF mutation medication. Normally I'm like super positive and yesterday I was just like not good company and I feel like it's just because today was like hanging over me. Most days I've moved past and I'm seeing the silver linings of things and I'm trying to keep as upbeat as possible and then whenever things like this happen where there's like appointments then it just like kind of hits me like a double decker bus where it just like wipes me out again and it's just hard it's just hard like mentally and emotionally and even physically so if you're also going through this and you find that you have really good days really bad days i completely relate and that's normal at least that's what i'm telling myself so i've been working this morning i just got off my last call for today and devin is on his way home from work now to take me to the appointment the hospital is pretty Pretty far out and the last time that we went there to the cancer clinic it took us forever to find where we were going to even get parked to walk through the hospital it just took us forever and we're already running late which just wouldn't be like us if you know you know say hi daddy do you know how cute you are I know you miss Devin so much he's literally looking over my shoulder to see the front door I'm trying to stay like on the positive path as always but with today hanging over me i just was like just like not good company at all yesterday i feel better today than yesterday but still just very nervous today i just don't know how it's gonna go i feel like it's very 50 50 on whether or not i'm gonna be put on this medication and i almost feel like it just depends on which oncologist that you ask because it's such a new medication and they just don't really know and they don't know what type of glioma i have so it's just hard to not know what you're walking into and to hope that it's the right path that they lead you down. But I, so I know that I always do like the sit down updates with you, but I figured I'd take you with us today. Obviously I can't record when we're in the actual meeting. I can't post that online. And Devin has just pulled up, so it is time to go. Hi hey, baby. You are covered in dirt. I know. Two hours later. <laughs> baby. Thank you don't know what we're walking into here. Yeah, it's a 50-50 whether you're gonna actually be given the medication or not. So. That's what I've been thinking all day. Yeah. <laughs> so blinded it would help if I could see what are you doing guy that doesn't know how to park I also don't know how to park so I feel your pain I have to just leave you in love let me, let me. Let's, let's see what I can do <laughs> bye, bye. It's like every single doctor, every single like oncologist that we see, they all have different opinions of everything and all have like no answers, which I understand. We always end up just leaving with more questions. Facts. He said that I was interrogating him. Like he made yeah. a joke about it and I'm like, yeah, I am because would you not like want to have answers to your questions like yeah. if it was you in this situation? He did confirm that I would be the first person to ever not have a diffuse low-grade glioma like come back or to go and a permanent remission to be the first person in the world to ever be cured. He did say that in terms of the BRAF medication, he said the same thing that like the um, radiation doctor said or the radiation oncologist that you don't want to use your chance now. He said like you have like three lines of defense. Yeah each you only get like one turn at really and you don't want to use it now because you're gonna need it later like yeah. uh i asked him like a couple of questions where i said like listen i won't quote you like this is just and i know you don't know for sure but i'm asking in your professional opinion what you would guess my chances are of this my chances are of this like how long i'm gonna live and he was just like you know wouldn't give me an answer and he said to me, you need to stop thinking, didn't he? Yeah. When he was leaving, 
yeah. try to stop thinking about it. And it's like, you know what? I wasn't thinking about it that much until I'm back in a hospital looking at an oncologist, like talking yeah. about my brain. Like, yeah. he was very, very nice. And I understand they don't have answers to the questions. But like, okay. you could give me like your professional opinion too. Like, you might not be allowed to, but like, he did read from the report, which was like the first time that someone's read from yeah. that report does. He said it was benign too, He did say it was benign. And I said to him, but I was told by two doctors, two other uh, doctors, one oncologist, that they don't know if it's benign or malignant right now. Yeah. He's like, oh, it's benign. Where does it say that in the report? I just don't understand how every person we go to is a completely different perception know. of that report. It's, it's weird because like in that report, it shows the progress of the reports, mm -hmm. you know, like- the testing. Yeah, so like in one, at one point, like the first report that they got was that it was a favorable diagnosis as the pleomorphic xanthoastrotoma. And then the next report was like, to find out if it's glioblastoma or not. And then it was like, oh, the favorite condition, or the favorite diagnosis is still pleomorphic xanthoastrotoma. And then the third report came out from Toronto saying that it's not that, you know, maybe- Pleomorphic yeah, xanthoastrotoma. And not it's not that. glioblastoma. However, yeah. the entire appointment that we had, he referred to it as pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma. But like every single time, didn't they? Every single time he yeah. said it like that. Yeah. And I said to him, like, you're the first person to mention this to us. Like, are you yeah. sure that's what it is? He's like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, we were told that they weren't sure. And he was that's like, That's why no. I think like he might have read the wrong part of the report or something. I don't know. I'm not really sure what the point of that appointment was. No. Like the more different perceptions of that report we get, and it's just confusing. Yeah. The geese. <laughs> you ready to go inside? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Baby dog. <laughs> Hello. So I I don't really know. How to feel after that appointment? I feel it went good until we realized that he was probably wrong. So, <laughs> aside from that, it was just a referring to it as a tumor that's not. Yeah. But yeah, just a weird appointment. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming with me to my appointment today. We're probably just gonna take it easy tonight and try and just like process that weird appointment that didn't give us any new information really. Just kind of odd. I feel like every time we go to an appointment, we just come out feeling like, what? Confused. Apart from that, at least it's not hanging over me anymore. I'm glad that I'm gonna be a wee bit more easy going now, not dreading that appointment so much. After talking to the oncologist, they did end up taking my blood again for blood tests, which I'm supposed to get done again this week. So twice in one week is not great, um, but it's literally like a weekly thing. I get it done all the time now, and you would think that it would get like not as bad, or not as like sore to get your blood taken, but I swear it's just stayed the same. But I, I'm not too sure why they were taking my blood or what the purpose of that test was, but they took it. Thank you for coming with me to my appointments today. And I appreciate you all as always, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.